We're going to go ahead and get started, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. Today's webinar is part of the Green Tech Renewables training series, and we're very excited to be welcoming to the digital stage our colleagues at REC. REC is a, a long established player in the space, but with new ownership, best in class management, and a renewed commitment to industry leadership, we're very excited to be partnering with REC. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So before kicking things off, some very quick housekeeping. Product sheets and additional information are accessible through GoToWebinar in the handout section. We will have a Q&A portion toward the end of today's event. And to participate, please submit your questions through the GoToWebinar questions section. And please be aware that a recording of today's event will be sent to all registrants. Next slide, please. So to quickly introduce Green Tech Renewables, we are the nation's leading solar equipment distributor with over 80 locations nationwide. Prior to September 1st, you knew us as CED Green Tech, um, but we have rebranded to Green Tech Renewables to reinforce our focused commitment to the renewable space and to supporting solar storage and EV contractors around the country. We continue to operate under the ownership of CED, affording us the same scale and stability and servicing the nation's renewables contractors. We are carry the leading solar, electrical, energy storage, and EV charging brands to support your installation business. Please visit our website at greentechrenewables.com to view a map of all of our locations and to get in touch with a location near you. With our numerous stocking locations nationwide, our fleet of trucks rolling daily, our commitment to our values of service, integrity, and reliability, and frankly, an unmatched service offering, there is no better partner in solar than Green Tech Renewables. And with that, I'm very pleased to turn the mic over to our esteemed host today, Roxy and Gabe, I think with an introduction from Brian. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, let's see if we can uh, get our systems working here. Hey guys, uh, welcome in everybody. Uh, my name is Brian Gilia. Uh, I'm head of sales here at uh, REC Group uh, and really excited uh, to be a part of this webinar. Uh, I appreciate uh, you guys uh, allowing me specifically to join and our team to present to you today. Um, today we've got Roxy Brown Woods, uh, who's uh, our account manager in the Northeast uh, and a, I think, 12 or 13 year veteran in the manufacturing space. Um, no one better uh, on our team on the East Coast to uh, present to you. We also have Gabe Davis, uh, Senior Key Account Manager on the uh, Southern California. Uh, I've worked with Gabe for the better part of 12 years in the residential space. Uh, and so thrilled to have uh, these two present for you guys today. A uh, couple of comments uh, at the top. Uh, thank you again to Green Tech Renewables for hosting. Uh, they've been a tremendous partner and really have led the way um, in the residential space, uh, helping to grow the industry. We've been thrilled to be partnered with uh, Green Tech Renewables for the better part of a year and a half, two years. Uh, Roxy and Gabe are going to give you all of the history and details around our business if you don't know much about us. Uh, at a very high level, I will just say that, um, you know, all we do is solar. We're solar experts. Uh, we've been doing it for 25 years. Uh, if you were at RE+, Plus, you had the opportunity to see our new products that we launched uh, just last week. Uh, and perhaps some of you were able to join us at our 25-year anniversary party, which uh, is the best party that I've been to in my uh, 15 years at Solar. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about technology today, uh, and I would just uh, I, I would characterize this conversation as a look forward to the future. REC Group is a technology leader. We've invested in a technology called Heterojunction because we believe it is the roadmap to uh, further um, technology technological innovation. And we've also invested in upstream supply that will allow us to have consistent availability throughout this year and the next three to five years. Along the way, um, we've continued to innovate uh, on technology and really kind of lead the industry um, in what we believe will be um, a trend towards heterojunction, towards larger wafers, and towards more density. So um, with all that said, incredibly excited to be here. 
Uh, I promised Roxy and Gabe that I would uh, not interrupt and uh, would shut up from here on out. So I'll throw it over to them and let you guys jump in. Thanks so much for having us. We'll all be lucky if Brian interrupts and chimes in a lot. He, we've learned everything we know from this guy. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, wonderful. Um, so as Brian said, my name is Roxy Brown, um, and I'm going to kick us off with the first couple of slides here. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to say I, I have been in solar now for 11 years, Brian, um, and uh, um, three of the companies I've worked for in those 11 years have been solar panel manufacturers. So I'm kind of a nerd about this stuff, and some of my slides might be a little more detailed than, than maybe you want, but I promise to keep it fun and light. All right, Hannah, you can go to the next slide. Okay, so Again, I like to keep it straight and to the point on these slides so you guys don't have your eyes crossed and get bored. So the few things I want you to know on this slide is number one, REC has been doing solar and has been named REC for 26 years now, actually. This is REC's 26th year. So that's worth knowing um, if you are a, um, you're selling a 25 year warranty and your module manufacturer has been around that long. I think it's worth, worth knowing that and uh, it can help your install, I mean, your homeowners understand that value. Also, I think it's uh, important to know that we are founded in Norway and we manufacture in Singapore. Um, Singapore is a very advanced nation with incredible human and environmental rights regulations, and it makes it a very uh, morally aligned place to manufacture. So we're proud of that. All right, next slide, Hannah. All right, guys, my name is Gabe Davis. Again, thank you for having me be part of today's presentation. Um, one of the things that we're most proud about at REC Group is our quality of product. So, you know, when we think about whom we are, right, as members of this company, just the same as you are representing equipment to your, to your homeowners, one of the things we can take the most pride in is when our systems perform exactly the way they should. Um, we'll spend the majority of our time today talking about our um, our technical attributes, but a really key thing that's very relevant to, to whom we are and, and whom REC is, is the quality of our products that we can stand behind. So one of the best metrics to be able to share that is our warranty claims rate. This is a summary of our uh, historic warranty claims rates over the last 10 plus years. We have a best in class, um, exceptionally low claims rate, and that's really relevant to you because you're not getting callbacks because of our panels, right? But it's also just really important to be aware of when we talk about whom we are as a manufacturer, when we talk about 25 years in the industry, we've had a lot of time to perfect our systems, our processes. And so that just gives you the confidence of knowing that when you're representing us, this is not a low tier, lowest cost module on the market. This is a high quality um, premium module that most importantly will give you the level of satisfaction um, of consistent performance without truck rolls in the future. Next slide, please. When we put this in perspective to the rest of the industry, we are literally heads and shoulders above the rest as far as a low claims rate. Um, historically, our competitors are seeing numbers sometimes in excess of 10 times what our claims rate is. Um, we're able to, to use this information to really have one of the best warranties in the, in the industry. And so Roxy's gonna talk next about our ProTrust warranty program. Without overcomplicating it, because we have such low claims rates, we're able to provide an advantage warranty in the form of a 25 year product performance and labor warranty um, to you, our installers. That's Next right. Lesson. That's right, Gabe. And that is to installers who are in our REC certified solar professional program. So that's something if, if some of you have been considering REC, perhaps kicking the tires and you're interested in joining, reach out to your local um, CED branch and perhaps your local REC key account manager, and we can help you understand what that program looks like. Those of you on today's training who are already in that program, we're happy to have you. Thank you for being part of our success. Um, but just in case this is news to any of you, this is what that warranty looks like. So as Gabe said, it's a 25, we call it a 25 times three, 25 years on the performance. So the you know yield of your module, the product and your labor. And the way I like to tell installers to talk about this is you say, if anything ever happens, REC will pay us to come out and fix it for you. That's quite a sales point in my opinion. Next slide. Okay, so built in within this training or within today's presentation, there are some quizzes and Hannah, we didn't take a second to acknowledge this, but 
Today, there is going to be three lucky winners chosen randomly throughout uh, from the attendees who get all three of the quiz questions correct. And the way you're going to answer these quizzes is in your chat box or question box, whichever. Hannah, you tell them what to do. But um, so, can you please, if you remember, oh, Gabe, we didn't call it out specifically. So I guess um, we could just say, uh, who has the lowest failure rate in solar? That's how we could answer this one that we're aware of. Um, sorry. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and say it for your guys' um, memory for later. Don't worry about the quiz answer being right. Uh, REC's historical claims rate has been 60 parts per million. The other way of saying that is for every, for every million modules we make, uh, only 60 ever fail. And that includes aesthetic defects and things like that. The industry average that 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 uh, Gabe showed after, I, t I tend to say that that hangs out around 6,000 parts per million if you did an average on that slide. So excuse us for this one. You guys can just answer in however you think you want to answer. Who has the best failure rate in the industry or the lowest? The next two slides. And, and whoever two wins, uh, you know, the three lucky winners will get some awesome, awesome REC swags. So uh, definitely worth submitting in those answers. Beautiful. Maybe I'll do a, a impromptu quiz later uh, to make up for this one. But the next two should be pretty easy to, to take note of what we're talking about and answer correctly. So excellent. Off to the races, everyone. Great. You know, one of the things that we should all take a moment to appreciate within the residential solar industry today in the U.S. is our market is growing at exponential rates. Um, and that's a function of a couple different things, right? But one of the things that we can all take a lot of pride in knowing is the actual energy, the per capita residential energy usage across the United States is going to go through its biggest increase over the next decade that we've seen in, in, in many past decades. Specifically, that is because of the electrification of the transportation sector. What I mean by that is our customers, our end customers, residential homeowners are buying electric vehicles at an unprecedented rate. We continue to see automobile manufacturers increase their targets, increase their capacity. What that means very specifically for us is that homeowners are using more electricity. One of the best things about this is, in addition to it being fantastic for the environment, it's also fantastic economically. So the, re the return on investment for many of our end customers increases as they go to electric vehicles because they're offsetting high cost of gas. The challenge, as we see in the industry where homeowners are needing 15, 20% more power, is that their roofs are not getting 15 to 20% bigger. That's where REC Alpha and our premium modules can really add value that other modules in the industry cannot. Next slide, please. So when we think about this from a standpoint of what does this mean tactically, we see EV adoption easily increasing a homeowner's need for solar by three to five kilowatts based on the type of vehicle, miles driven, due to uh, environmental changes that are just happening as a result of um, uh, accelerated cl uh, gl uh, climate change, AC electrical heating loads are increasing. In some parts of the country, we're seeing a requirement to install more electric appliances, uh, specifically on the West Coast. And most importantly, the demand we're seeing signaled in the market is homeowners are, are asking to offset larger usage for the future because not only do they see their current needs going up, but they plan on, let's say, getting an electric vehicle in the future or getting a second electric vehicle in the future, things like that. So when, again, when we drill it down, our homeowners needs are going up, their roofs aren't getting bigger, and we have an ability to add a real value add by producing more, or by providing more efficient modules, which can increase the system size, offset a greater portion of their bill, improve their return on investment, and really give them the energy independence that they want. All right, next slide. So to conclude, when we look at this, REC Alpha in our Alpha series is the best module on the market to meet their needs. Um, we continue to see a ton of, a, of a recognition within the industry and, um, and demand being generated at the homeowner level. So some of you might have already had customers asking you about this module. Um, we look forward to continuing to, to drive uh, national branding and, and advertising to, to help increase that awareness. And, uh, and again, um, we're thrilled to be able to partner with you. We're to have all of you as partners today and certainly to grow those partnerships for the future. Totally. I really like, Gabe, how you said that because it's true. You know, we've all watched. How many of you guys have watched uh, the modules just get bigger and bigger 
in order to get higher wattage and the roof space isn't getting any bigger, right? And in fact, in some states on my coast, on the East Coast, uh, offset rules are getting stricter and <laughs> permitting is getting tougher. So like, if you're not gonna make your module have a higher yield and get more watts out of that square, then, <laughs> then we're all kind of in trouble here. So it's great to see REC, you know, this HJT technology, which I'm gonna talk about now, I wanna make sure that anyone on this call, this might be review for some of you, but I wanna make sure you know when you're talking to a homeowner and they say, well, you know, I can get a, a name the brand mono perk for, for less than this REC alpha module. Why would I buy, especially if it's the same wattage, why would I buy an REC alpha when I can get a, a bigger but cheaper mono perk? And I want you guys to be able to intelligently talk about the difference between mono perk technology and HJT. So really quick, Hannah, can you jump to the next slide? So this is this is a quick little uh, Roxy being a nerd moment, and I just like to review the steps to make a mono perk cell. Those of us in solar, I don't know how many of you. I wish I could see your faces, and I wish I could see you raise hands. It would be it would be, make me happy to know how many of you have ever toured a solar manufacturing facility or stepped inside of a factory. I used to give tours of a factory at a, one of my former um, employers, and really got to see the stuff hands on. So I like to talk about this stuff. So in order to make a solar cell, let's talk about mono perk first. First, you're gonna get raw silicon. You're gonna melt that down into what I like to call lava. I think there's a technical term, but that's my term for it. Then you're gonna dip in a little bit of crystal silicon and you're gonna pull it out over like 72 hours, super slow. And like a spoon out of molasses, it forms what's called an ingot. Then you're gonna slice that ingot into wafers. In the case of mono perks, you slice them about as thick as cardstock paper. So pretty thick pretty fragile, keep that in mind. And then all you're gonna do is lay on your bus bars, you do some doping, you do a little bit of chemical work on the, on the cell to make it um, you know, perfectly foldable tick. And then you have a finished cell that gets laminated into a module. Between glass, back sheet, and an aluminum frame, that's all you have protecting that fragile silicon. So I wanted to point that out. Now, in order to make our cells, HJT, and just so you guys know, uh, this technology was pioneered by Sanyo, then it was sold to, or it was then used by Panasonic, but REC is the only manufacturer right now mass producing HJT technology in the way that we're doing. And we took the idea and we perfected it. So we're very proud of what we're making right now and you guys should be too if you're selling it. So everything we just talked about for a mono perk, I would like to show you the difference for a, a HJT to sell. So you start off with that same raw silicon, then you melt it down into lava. However, I will point out, we do use higher quality silicon. We source our silicon from really ethical and high quality places. Part of why REC didn't get gummed up last year or this year in the whole WRO forced labor stuff. I'll just scoot, scoot right past that. That's a big topic. So raw silicon, melt it into lava, dip in your crystal, pull out your ingot, and now you're gonna slice these wafers thinner than printer paper. Very, very, very thin, much thinner than a monoprick. Then you're gonna dope it and um, do all the things you do to the cell. And then the coolest part is you're gonna sandwich that wafer between two layers of what's called amorphous silicon. And the easiest way to describe this is it's a fle flexible form of clean silicon that allows your cell to bend. Keep that in mind, because we're gonna play a video for you in a minute that's actually very exciting so you can see what I mean. But that is then what you laminate into your module between glass and back sheet in your frame. And what you now have is a cell that won't bend, that won't break when it's bent. And we all know wind and snow can cause module deflection, right? So we have a super strong frame that we'll review throughout this training, a frame that won't bend and a cell that will. That's a good combination, I like to say. So that is what you're talking about. And now Gabe's gonna go into that little ice cream sandwich you see down there. The next slide, he's gonna go into some of the benefits that come out of this because not just cell durability, it's much more than that. You get all kinds of benefits in yield. So Gabe, take it away. <laughs> That's right. So this is our secret sauce. This is how we can create more power with um, for the homeowner on day one, on day 10, on year 10 and year 25. So there's a couple key things that are true advantages to our product, right? The first is higher power density. We get higher power density because we leverage a mono in type cell. Then with the amorphous silicon, we're using now two different types of material, each capturing different parts of the light spectrum, which allows for us to create, again, a more energy efficient cell. Um, the best example of this is the highest quality, highest efficiency cells 
being produced in the world are used for extraterrestrial applications, okay? They're going up on satellites. That is the most expensive type of solar technology available, and they can do it because getting power to satellites is the hardest place to get power anywhere out there, right? So they want to create the most efficient cells. We are able to follow in those footsteps and to use a double junction cell. Again, we've got two different types of solar manufacturing or solar material that creates a higher power density. So for starters, right, that's going to get us more power on the roof on day one. Then over time as an industry, we're all familiar with how uh, modules do slowly degrade in production over time because we have this great, um, really strong cell it's going to prevent against micro cracks, which is a key culprit in uh, system and deg module degradation. We've also got a great frame that, again, we're going to speak to in more detail that prevents against those micro cracks. The end result is we can produce more power on day one. We can produce more power over time. And some of the other benefits of our HJT technology platform is that we have a temperature, an industry leading temperature coefficient. So, as we know in this industry, there's an inverse relationship between heat and system production. Um, at the cell level, because of our amorphous silicon, that gives us an advantage to temperature coefficient. So our panels will, will produce more power in those higher heat conditions. Next slide, please. So to summarize, we've got 92% power at year 25. That's truly industry leading. We've got 21.9% efficiency with our alpha cells and even higher with, a, with our alpha pure R, which we're really excited to talk about next. And we've got that industry leading best temperature coefficient of negative 0.26%. That contributes to optimal low light product performance. So our systems will turn on sooner, turn off later in the day. And the end result is, again, you're going to get more power on the roof. Um, one thing to call out that we haven't spoken to in as much detail, um, REC being one of the oldest manufacturers in the industry, we really take a lot of pride in having environmentally friendly manufacturing. So we've been able to remove lead from our entire manufacturing process. Uh, that creates one of the easiest panels to recycle in the industry. Um, and because we use solar as part of our manufacturing process, our, our factory is uh, partially solar powered. We have the lowest carbon footprint out there. So again, we've got a lot of great things to give to our customers, and it's exciting to uh, to work with you all on that in the future. Next slide. Heck yeah. This slide, guys, if you want to print that slide and put it next to your bed at night, that's what I recommend. That's what I did when I first started here. Mostly joking, um, but really, if you want to sell this product, I do not recommend going out into the market, taking this product on as a new product you want to sell, and not knowing some of these points, because then the first time you get a price objection, you might just cave. But if you understand that this, this module, HJT technology, REC Alpha, the 400 or the 420, if you understand that they will save their homeowners significantly more money because of what Gabe just went over, it's a no brainer and it's easy to sell. So, um, okay, so we're gonna play this video for you now. Um, I do wanna make sure you guys noted the things we just talked about because another quiz is coming. Keep it in mind. All right, so this video though is really fun. It's my favorite thing to play in trainings and also I show strangers in the grocery store sometimes. I just really love this video. So we're gonna play it for you. And what you're gonna watch is the deflection test between a mono perk on the left and REC Alpha on the right. And you're gonna watch to see where they hit their breaking point. We're gonna find out together. Hannah, will you see if this video will play for us? Okay, now there's really fun like dance music playing in the background, but you just have to imagine that part. But here we go. So. The factory, we use a machine, but for the video, we used hands. Mono perk on the left. Oh my gosh, wow, barely deflected before it shattered into a million pieces. REC Alpha is still going strong, reaching the bottom of the plane, by golly. And maybe the coolest part of all, returning to its exact normal shape, no bend left in it. I swear, I think that video is so cool. And it's important, the reason this is cool is because you don't want a module that's gonna be full of micro cracks, as Gabe said earlier, right? These modules will deflect. Let's just say because of wind and snow and never because any of your installers ever walk on them, right? Everyone, guys? Uh, but uh, no, so this th these modules will deflect, um, but our cells are super strong and our super, so is our frame. So I think that video is 
pretty telling. And if a homeowner is really giving you a hard time about not understanding quality module versus commodity module, that's one video you can show them and just say, look, they're literally from the base cell level of this module. It's built stronger and better. All right, next, next slide. <laughs> so this is that, this is what I'm talking about here. So these are the micro cracks that you can get when a module is deflected under wind, snow, or heaven forbid, a uh, footprint. Um, so what you see is mono perk, a traditional mono perk on average, their wind and snow load rating is about 54, 24 pascals. RC is nearly double that. So under, under extreme conditions like hurricane in Florida, Miami-Dade wind county rated baby, under extreme conditions, our module was um, was tested more extreme than the mono perk, and we have no micro cracks in ours and very minimal power loss, even after being exposed to insane conditions. So, I think this is worthy of your of your attention as well. These these micro cracks are a big problem. In fact, in my history in solar, I have known that there's two main causes of module failure in the field. The number one is moisture molecule penetration of the back sheet. Another way to say that is water damage. And number two is micro cracks that lead to hot spots. So this is not a small issue and REC has addressed it in a big way. Great. Thank you, Roxy. As we continue to look at what makes our product better, right? Um, next slide, please. There's a couple of things happening at the cell level that are important to call out that really just advantage uh, our end customer, right? So. The two things I'm going to cover, the first is our iconic twin design. So this is our Twin Peak architecture. Um, and sneak preview, our Alpha Pure R takes this to the next level. Yeah, but it specifically does. with our Alpha Pure Pure modules, the module itself is, is segmented into two pieces, top and bottom. They operate independently of each other. And so if there is shading that's occurring at the bottom of the module, the top portion is still going to perform just as it should. Um, this shading could be dynamic shading in the form of a you know, uh, a cloud or something like that. It could be static shading in the form of a roof vent, which hopefully isn't impacting an array. But either way, what it's going to do is just increase the granularity of max power point tracking to the module level within the module and give your customers greater performance. Next slide, please. The next thing that we're able to do is increase the electron flow. So a, a typical module has five bus bars. On, on the, on, that's on the left side. On the right-hand side, you'll see our 13 conductors, okay? This allows for, again, uh, better electron flow, lower resistance, and the end result is greater efficiency at the cell level. Next slide, please. Yeah, I think it's funny to know that electrons can actually get in, into congestion, like on a highway, like you have in Southern California, Gabe. <laughs> So it, it's kind of hilarious that they can get they can actually get stuck in traffic and we have more highways or more on ramps, if you will. Um, OK, really quick, Hannah, click through some of those little bullet points. They can all be up for this. I just like to show in case any of you on the call have not ever touched or felt an alpha module before. This is what the back of our module looks like. The one on the right, the two back support bars uh, are part of what gives our module the robust 7,000 positive, 4,000 negative Pascal wind and snow load rating. Those of you in Florida know that that is above Miami-Dade wind county rating. Pretty exciting. Um, and uh, also it just really is, it's a 30 millimeter frame, so it's super sleek, super sexy, uh, narrow platform, and also extremely strong. So we, we love this about our module, and I think it's, it's pretty cool. I also noticed, I saw a number of you have hands up. So I, I also said, like, I wish I could see your hands. I'm not sure if any of you guys did that because of that. Thank you if you did. Um, but if you do have any questions, Hannah's going to be taking these questions um, as they come in. If there's something's highly relevant, she'll, she'll let us know and we'll read it out. Otherwise, we'll do a Q&A at the end. I just wanted to make sure no one's feeling ignored. Cool. All right, next slide. Here's number two. Uh, okay, so I, Gabe, I think this is actually yours. <laughs> Fantastic. So for, I hope everybody was paying attention. Can anyone share in the chat so, in the, the chat feature what our uh, performance is, our performance guarantee at year 25? Drum roll. Drum roll. Let them, let them get them in. I'm not seeing enough. I'll answer it yet, Hannah. Yeah, we'll give everyone another minute or two here to submit. Love it. And while we're doing that, um, I'll bring up one question that just came in. 
Could the added rigidity and wind load protection from the support bars translate to savings in terms of racking and structural BOS? Uh, great question, Roxy. Do you want me to take that? Sure, go ahead. Uh, short answer is that's not a cost savings we've seen materialize in the field um, at this extent. Um, it could certainly allow for greater spans and things like that and potentially fewer penetrations on the roof. Um, however, you know, a lot of what we're continuing to see right now is that the, the overall racking industry has been is meeting the, the norm, right? And not necessarily updated for our, our panels. Um, so at this time, I don't say I wouldn't say that's a, a huge material advantage. Um, what is a real material advantage is because of our power density, we're able to drive a larger system with fewer actual modules. That um, can certainly result in, in, in a cost savings. Um, for example, a lower efficiency 360 watt module could easily have the same footprint as our as a system of ours that's 15% more power. So you are able to see fewer penetrations, fewer racking because of our higher wattage versus a lower wattage, lower efficiency product. Um, but it, because of the frame design, I don't know if there's an actual cost savings there. Great question though. Yeah, for sure. Triple. Okay, Hannah, go ahead and flash the answer because I see a lot of correct answers in the chat. Yay, 92. So guys, remember, this means that in 25 years, our module loses no more than 8%. There's nothing else in our universe that compares to that. My car will lose <laughs> way more than that in 25 years, right, in terms of all kinds of issues. And, uh, you know, computers and cell phones are planned obsolescence built in. So this is just really cool and unique. And in fact, it could take some work to get a homeowner to understand that. This isn't a great, great guarantee. A lot of the mono perks out there are hanging out in the low 80s, right? In terms of their guarantee at year 25. That's a great point. And just, just to layer in, you know, when we look at how a lot of people are going solar today, they're financing it, right? They're financing it over a 20, a 25 year term. So being able to give them a best in class performance over that, that term of their financing is really, really relevant. And most importantly, results in more kilowatt hours, which is a greater savings. Our systems will literally save the customer more money over time. So again, when I think about how to position that to a customer, it's we can put more power on your roof on day one because of our power efficiency, and you'll be getting more power at year 10, at year 25, because of our improved system performance. Exactly. And if our modules drop below it, we replace the module lickety split. You should see how fast our warranty claims rate process is. We've got someone named George who runs the department and he is so fast. He, in fact, one time reminded one of my installers that they hadn't finished their warranty claim because he wanted to make sure he finished it in, in his standard excellent timing. <laughs> so right. this is, yay, Gabe, we're going to talk about Alpha Pure R now. That's right. This is our favorite topic. So one of the biggest challenges we saw as an industry in 2022 was demand exceeded supply. Um, in our RUC group, we've dealt with that firsthand. It's been a great thing to have a product that's in high demand. That is, but as part as representatives of the company, and as part of our sales team, we want more of a you know product to, to be able to, to help the industry. So good news, REC started an expansion in Q2 of, the, of this year. Um, and we've now seen that manifest in the form of our new product, Alpha Pure R. We have expanded our factory lines in Singapore, and now we are building our latest generation of Alpha. It will be available in January of 2023, so in just a couple months. And we're really excited to share this information to all of you. Um, the call to action is really clear. If you like what you see, reach out to your local CED office, um, share uh, your interest in this product, and let's make sure they can forecast for you. Based on what we see in the industry today, um, next year will be the biggest year ever for residential solar. We still expect there to be supply chain uh, challenges across the industry as a whole. And the, the single best uh, piece of advice we can give is plan early, forecast early, and uh, we, we'd love for you to be working with our product next year. Yeah, the word, the word is forecast, my friends, even though it's no fun. Our boss, Brian, makes us do forecasts all the time, and they're no fun, but they're necessary in a market like this. So do plan with your CED branch near you and, and get your get your estimations in so you guys actually get product access for sure. All right, Hannah, next slide. 
So I, I like to joking, we called this fat boy slim in the very beginning and I still find it so funny. This is officially not the product name though. So please do not call it that. If you, don't say Roxy's the one that told you to. Uh, but we are now gonna have the Alpha Pure R line out, which we're so excited about. That is the module on the on the left there. Um, and I like to put this, this slide up, even though it's a little grainy, I like you to see what it looks like next to our Alpha out today. The 400 Alpha out today is the one on the right. And the, the Fat Boy Slim or Alpha Pure R is on the left. And so we're very, actually very proud of how power dense it is. And I got to see it and touch it for the first time at SPI and um, just fell in love. This module is so reasonably sized, so uh, light. It's only 47 pounds. Um, it's got the 30 millimeter frame. It's a beauty, guys. It's a beauty. And it's it's quite small compared to some of the 400s that are barely making it to the market now for some of the commodity manufacturers. This thing is significantly smaller and way, way, way more power dense. So you're going to be able, it's going to be like shooting, I think, fish in a barrel with this module out there, comparing it to some 400s that are so much bigger. So very exciting. Um, next slide. Um, so this is the... Uh, Interesting thing Gabe alluded to earlier, the four junction box split. So earlier we mentioned how our other module, our current alpha is split down the middle two ways. Well, this module actually has four different junction box splits, meaning that if, if a little bit of shade falls on the module right here on the, you, know, so you can see a little bit on that bottom left corner, a little bit of shade falls on the module, you still have 75% of the module still performing at peak efficiency, which is awesome and a big, big deal. Um, so this is going to limit shading concerns and, and just drive things in a good way. All right, next slide. Fantastic. Um, and you can click all the, the slides through here, yeah. Hannah. Um, so this is just comparing and contrasting our, our current Alpha Pure and our Alpha Pure R. Um, one of the, the key things to call out again when we talk about our modules, right? I love it when other people will say things like, oh, the other company's module is cheaper, right? My response is, of course it is, right? It's not what we've built, right? This is a very different technology platform. It's going to drive a much higher level of production, all the things we've just gone over, right? Um, so as you all are thinking about how our product can fit into your sales pipeline or really into your, your, your sales strategy, um, this is certainly complements the better best approach, right? Um, we don't expect every residential customer in the United States to say, this is the right panel for me. Um, and in some applications, it may not be. Um, we are really pleased to be able to offer the, the highest end premium product in the market today. And, um, and there's just a tremendous amount of need and interest for, for customers to not buy systems built on decades old technology, but really to buy systems for the future, right? With, with the current and best technology available. And that's what we can provide. Um, so when we can, can compare and contrast the two products, as, Ro as Roxy explained, the Alpha Pure R is a couple inches shorter, a couple inches wider. Um, we're still under 50 pounds. So from, a, from an OSHA standpoint, it's still a one person lift, which is great. Um, we are excited to be able to offer this product in 2023. And so availability is a big piece of it, right? Is that this is, if you are new to working with REC, this is definitely going to be the best product for you. Um, and as we continue to expand as a manufacturer, we will continue to expand um, with the Alpha Pure R line. Um, key things to call out, uh, target wattage for the Alpha Pure line, it's going to be starting at 410 watts, quickly moving up to 420 watts um, in Q1. Um, from a compatibility standpoint, max uh, uh, module level power electronics is a big part of our industry due to the rapid shutdown requirements. So there is compatibility with both Enphase and Solar Edge along with all the other string inverters that are starting to come back online in the market. Um, as you reach out to your local CED team and talk about this product, we'll be able to ensure that you have access to pricing, answer all of your technical questions. Um, but most importantly, this is a great product that's compatible with all the leading um, module level power electronics providers today. Next slide, please. Um, one of the things to be aware of with Alpha Pure R is that we've moved to larger size wafers. This is something we will see across the industry over the next coming years. Yeah. Um, REC is consistently at the, the, the front of the technology curve. So uh, this is a 40 cell module, which is kind of fun to think about. Um, 
but it's because the cells are physically bigger. So we use a 210 millimeter wafer, and that's what creates um, the, the higher output, even though it's a fewer number of cells. Yeah. Next slide. Or yeah, click through a few more. <laughs> Um, also, Gabe, I'm sorry to interrupt you on your slide, but I just want to call out installers gave me a hard time when our, our, our alpha pure today first launched because they said the leads weren't quite long enough for some of their installation preferences. I want to call out that these leads are way longer and they're mounted across the, the long side. If you see that uh, the diagram there at the far right corner, um, our leads are now 1700 millimeters or I think that's like 67 inches long. Um, and uh, and it's definitely an improvement, I think. And, and the short, the long side mounting is going to be fun fun for you guys to figure out. But every installer I've chatted about with this has told me this will be an improvement for their uh, wire management and mounting. That's right. Next slide, please. Quiz number four or three. Yay! Okay, this one's easy, and I hope you remember how many. How many junction box sections does the Pure R have? Um, uh, the original alpha had two, if that helps you. How many, how many, how many? Oh, look at that. Look at all these right answers coming in. This is why I love quizzes, because it actually shows that you guys are listening and you <laughs> care. Gabe and I really care about this stuff. So we, we like to folks answer their questions. I've got a question for you guys. Okay, let's, let's hear it. Why such a large VOC increase with the new R? Um, oh, I, I'll take this a little bit, but then I'll have Brian answer most. Ooh, 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 ooh. Do you see how it comes right up? <laughs> you got to take it. <laughs> so, so, so uh, okay, fine, Brian, I'll let you do it all together. But I do know it has to do with uh, increasing the, the, the size of the wafer affects voltage or is it amperage? Now, so I mean, this this gets pretty technical, but the the point here is removing the larger wafers, right? 210 square millimeters. When you increase the area of a cell, uh, that increases the amperage. Amperage is what's dangerous, right? When you're on a roof and there's a some sort of an emergency, that's what firemen actually care most about, um, and that that's what can be the most dangerous. Um, so the way that you reduce your amperage is you cut these uh, cells in half, right? So it's actually a um, exponential relationship. So when you cut it in half, you reduce the amperage by a quarter. Uh, I, I'm sorry reverse that but the point is by cutting in half you reduce the amperage pretty significantly um, so then we have to string the cells in series and in parallel and the reason the voltage goes up is to maintain the power so the fact that we're half cutting these cells and then putting them in series it's 20 half cut cells or 10 full cells that's why the voltage goes up it's an intentional design because we believe that's the safest design. We expect the market to move in that direction. Um, and the headline is that it's because we're half cutting a 210 millimeter cell and then stringing 20 of those in one string. If we only did, you know, 10 string, I'm sorry, yeah, if we did 10 half cut cells, so five cells in a string and doubled the number of junction boxes and strings, our voltage would be lower, our amperage would be higher, and we'd have eight junction boxes. Um, which we decided against. So trying to thread the needle of product design and meeting uh, market requirements and uh, customer preferences. Love it, love it. Thank you, Brian. So this is why yep. we have Brian on these calls. <laughs> awesome. I see a lot of right answers, Hannah. So I think you could flash the answer now. And it's four. And the reason that that gives you 75% more power in some instances is because if one little bit of your module is shaded at the bottom, you're going to have 75% of your module still performing. Whereas in the old out in the old module, you guys, we all know, right? That if you take a module that's all one junction box, no split down the middle, you shade right here, your whole module goes down to the ability of that cell. In the old alpha, you could do shading and the top half was okay. In the new alpha, you can shade down here and the hot top 75% is okay. So I think that's a fun sales point. All right, moving right along. <laughs> Great. So this is one of the things that is most relevant to us when we're sitting at the kitchen table, right? It's 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 fun. It's amazing to have great um, facts and information about our, about our products. But when we're doing financially modeling with our customers, it's really relevant to be able to show the value add that our panels bring compared to the other products available in the market. Um, 
again, if I was sitting with a customer today and they were comparing and contrasting these two systems, one sold with a mono perk type module with a 86% performance guarantee at year 25 versus our Alpha 400 with a 92% at year 25, which is a 0.25% degradation per year. The key things that we want to highlight are the greater system yield at year 25. Is that with our system, we'll literally have um, close to an extra year's worth of production, right, available to the homeowner. So with this comparison, uh, it's over 25,000 more kilowatt hours. That results in a lower cost per kilowatt hour if they're going to amortize the, that 25-year 25, 25 performance over the cost of the system. Um, so again, the key things that we want to be able to drive with our customers is not just giving them a system that meets their needs for today, but because we're all planning for the future, because solar is a long-term investment, we really want to zero in on the fact that we're leveraging the best technology available. We're not leveraging technology that is literally decades old, um, and it's just the lowest cost to go solar today, but not driving the highest cost savings for the future. Um, so this is a lot of fun. And it's also something that a lot of customers, residential customers, can appreciate at the kitchen table. Um, leverage our 25-year ProTrust warranty, right? Being able to offer this great system production, but as well as an industry-leading um, a, a labor component to our warranty, that's a real value add that a lot of homeowners, when they see this, it's easy for them to distinguish the difference between the run-of-the-mill product and our premium modules. Um, Absolutely. All right. And if you guys are interested in, in that program that Gabe just mentioned again, um, you might not know your REC account manager, but your local CED branch will. So certainly reach out and find us, and we're happy to support you guys. Um, and this was a true honor to be here today. So thank you all for, for listening and answering questions. And I mean, I would love it if you guys had any additional questions for us. We would love to answer more if you guys have any. Yep, just send them our way. Team, while that, uh, while that percolates through, I'll just make a couple of comments uh, to close us out here. I didn't want to make too many at the top because I wanted to make sure we had plenty of time for Roxy and Gabe to go through the presentation. It's also fun for me to be able to watch this. I don't get to see this too much. Uh, and uh, I think you can see that we've got some real experts and energy on our team. So thank you, Roxy and Gabe. Um, so we talked a lot about technology and how this can translate to you, uh, the installer, um, you know, inserting REC Group into your business um, and how it translates to the kitchen table. For a bit of context, um, Gabe and I both started a residential company and, and we spent, you know, 12 years selling at the kitchen table. We came over because we believed that REC Group was going to be a disruptive opportunity within the residential segment. Um, and the last slide that Gabe just talked about is really uh, where that benefit comes through. So the way that I often talk about this is we make rectangles that turn sunlight into electricity and our rectangles produce more electricity. At the end of the day, that's all a consumer wants, right? And if you look at it over 25 years, our kilowatt hours cost less than everyone else's, even though you pay a little bit more upfront. We have a lot of training in that dimension that can help you guys bring that message forward to a homeowner. At the end of the day, this becomes a virtuous cycle for you. When you sell a premium product, you close more, you get more referrals, you get uh, more uh, profit to your bottom line, and at the end of the day, your sales team makes more money. So that's uh, one of the virtuous cycles we like to think about. The other point I was going to make is we're very intentional about our product's decisions uh, for the long-term outlook. Roxy touched on the point that, you know, the mono perk technology that is 80% of the market today, that's a decade old. You're going to see all of that technology sunset over the next 18 months. Yeah. Everybody who is making a mono perk technology today is going to be moving to either heterojunction or an N-type Topcon. Um, N-type Topcon is, um, you know, what we expect most companies to go to. It has about 16 process steps. It's expensive and really hard to do. The reason we chose heterojunction is because we have seven process steps. It's more scalable and it's easier to do. So as we begin to work together with many of you, hopefully with Pure R, know that we are being very intentional about our decisions on technology because we're going to scale and grow rapidly. The last point I'll make, we're building the largest solar factory in the world. 
at, the, at this moment. Um, it will be manufactured in India. We're also exploring uh, factory sites here in the US. We hope to have good news on that here in the near future. So you're gonna see a lot more from us in the way of domestic manufacturing, in the way of manufacturing outside of China and having a vertically integrated supply chain. That's a lot of big words that really I don't think resonate with homeowners. The thing that resonates most with homeowners is we save you the most money. Um, so we'll, we'll spend more time on that with you guys individually. In the meantime, really appreciate your time. And with that, let's see if there's any questions that we can answer. Well, you just answered one of the questions, Brian. That was, are we going to manufacture in the U.S.? So you hit that one right off the bat. The answer You're is damn yes. straight we are. Um, damn straight. <laughs> Yeah, they, so we're we're in the middle of site selection now and deciding how big we go. It's not a question of if, it's where and how big. And um, we will keep you uh, in the loop as it as it comes uh, more clear. Hannah, I'm going a tiny bit more about and I've production for PR. Production for PRR and when to expect it and and how much is our next question. Yeah, I'll tackle that one. Uh, so production of Pure R began in Singapore uh, in September. And so we're uh, literally just beginning to get the first uh, results of how our product comes off the line. Uh, the first Pure R products will arrive here in the United States in January. Um, slated, I actually just got an update this morning. We were supposed to receive some uh, around Christmas, uh, but it looks like that might slip by one week. So uh, expect it the first week of January, and then um, you know we're gonna have about 400 megawatts to bring into the United States next year, and then we'll be doubling that uh, the following year. Heck yeah. Um, and Hannah, that question said a little bit more about like, how can I how can I be sure I can get my hands on it? I ran out of product at some point this year. I wanna be clear, I've, I've had this conversation with almost all of my installers that I support, um, there were people that were not able to get their hands on REC Alpha this year, but we did bring in more than ever before, meaning that the customers that planned got it and the customers that, that didn't have the plan are all the way baked or just, just missed it by a week or whatever you want to call it, they're the ones that were unable to get enough. So planning is going to be in the name of the game this year, At end of this year and into 23, definitely plan, forecast. Um, get your sales pipelines over to your CD. At the very least, if you're selling it, for sure let CED know so that they can at least try to have enough for you. Um, but yes, we are bringing in more in 23 than we even did in 22. And it's only going up from there. I hope that answers the question um, about availability for smaller installers. Can you place orders now or not until Q1? Um, definitely reach out to your CED rep now um, to get those orders planned. Sure. Uh, so I'm looking through the rest of these. How do you assure people you're concerned about environmental impacts mining from your products are sustainable? Um, so we have a traceability report that um, we do make available to our partners who sign non-disclosure agreements. Um, all that said, um, you know, we can attest to the fact that we have uh, a extremely clean supply chain, both environmentally and uh, from a humanitarian standpoint, um, all the way up to our polysilicon, uh, which comes from a company called Vocker, which is European. Um, and then, you know, the fact that we manufacture in Singapore, uh, you know, is indicative of the fact that we, you know, are pretty far removed from the Chinese supply chain, although not completely today, we will be in uh, probably 12, 18 months. Um, and then on the environmental uh, uh, point, um, we have certifications that uh, attest to the fact that we have um, the uh, greenest module in the world. We don't have lead in our module. That's again, another benefit of using heterojunction technology. There's, there's no lead. And, um, uh, and so we can share with you some of those certificates. Uh, it's something we take really seriously. We have the uh, fastest energetic payback, right? So the amount of energy that our panels produce relative to the amount of energy it takes for them to be made um, is the fastest in the world. Um, and so reach out to us. We've got a lot of white papers on that and can share more details with you. Also, um, can I add on to that, Brian? Because I've yeah. been in, again, we've all been in solar a long time. I know a lot of you guys have door knockers on your teams that are generating leads for you. And if you ever encounter someone on the phone or at a door and they say, no, nah, get out of here. I, ho I heard solar panels are more dirty than they are clean. One of those people, if you ever run into one of those, my favorite way to combat that is I lean in and I say, 
you know what you're right you're probably talking about thin film panels those are pretty toxic they've got cadmium and beryllium and all kinds of toxic mine tour metals and things like that however i sell crystal and silicon foldable tank modules which have been around for 70 years and they are actually quite environmentally friendly the only thing toxic in a pv module is lead and guess what the module i sell got the lead out hey oh let's go rec so now that's how i like to address that one in case you all want to use that <laughs> oh man roxy uh you're the best <laughs> All right, a couple other questions I see here. Hemlock, semiconductor, property in Mitten. Yep, very familiar with Hemlock. We are exploring all over the country. I think the short version is there are no facilities in the country that are big enough for the factory that we're citing. So we're likely going to have to build a factory ourselves. And um, that's that's kind of the step in the process that we're looking at. But uh, very familiar with that and uh, and Hemlock. Uh, did REC once upon a time have an ingot manufacturer facility near Billings? We sure did. There's a long sorted history there. I won't go into it now, but the short version is uh, that that organization is no longer part of REC group. We spun off, I want to say it was 2010. Um, they kept the name. Uh, they've shuttered their facility, but we'll be turning it back on. Um, and I think with uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, you may see uh, that that facility uh, ramping back up. We are looking at doing our silicon refinement in uh, India. We may look in the United States, but the reality is the cost of power here is higher than other places in the world. And so silicon refining is better done um, in, in other countries at this point. Um, I think that clears most of them. Hannah, did I miss anything? No, I think you got it. We answered uh, some good ones throughout the presentation. So, uh, but if anyone has any other questions that come up, feel free to reach out to us directly. You've got Gabe and Roxy's contact info there on the screen, and uh, we'll be happy to answer those questions. So just a couple of anecdotes to, to share with you guys as you start selling our product. Uh, and I, I did my best to not interrupt. I wanted to, just wanted to allow Gabe and Roxy to, to do their thing. So- Oh, here we like, go. Now the real training begins, everyone. Here we go. <laughs> our warranty claims rate is phenomenal. It's, it's out of this world. It's like, that is the number one measure of a manufacturer. I almost jumped in and was like, did you hear those numbers? It's insane. So something to take away. If you buy a megawatt of REC Group products, you're gonna have one module fail, right? That's what that's the way the math works if you have a 60 parts per million failure rate. You buy a megawatt, you get one module to fail. Others will have like entire, like hundreds if not thousands of modules fail. So that's a huge testament. There are other companies that claim to have similar warranty claims rates, but they're often focusing on one module. We have that consistent performance across all of our modules again all we do is solar we're experts at it and then beating the drum beating the drum we make rectangles that produce more kilowatt hours which saves your homeowners more money um it, you know if you look at some of the financial models uh it definitely proves out that you can make more money selling our products it's a virtuous cycle selling premium helps you close more helps you get more referrals helps your sales teams make more um, and helps your business become more profitable. We're happy to help you guys um, do that. And um, that's our story. We're sticking to it. Sticking to it. <laughs> awesome. All right. I don't know if we throw it back to Green Tech now or not, but I did just want to thank Roxy and Gabe uh, for putting on a, a great presentation and thank Hannah for uh, running the show for us here today. So with um, that, yeah great. and thank green tech for having us this was great we're so excited to be in front of your guys as customers and um let's go sell all right we feel That's the right. same Roxy and Gabe, great job brian thanks for closing us out and uh, to everyone on the line today we look forward to supporting your solar business with rec's leading products Woo! all right thanks y'all thanks guys hi everybody